friends, welcome to Love and Life's Journey DIY. I'm Chantel, and this video is my top 20 DIYs of 2022. These are some of your favorites and some of my favorites, but they're in no particular order, so let's jump in and get started. Here's a picture from the Wayfair website where I got my inspiration. These tiles are bigger than what I'm going to be making, but still $147 for a set of four seems pretty pricey. And you certainly could make larger ones than I'm going to do today using these 12 inch self-adhesive wall tiles from Dollar Tree. I am just going to use two of these today and I'm also going to use two of these fall wall decor pieces that I had on hand. Dollar Tree carries these pretty much year round just in different styles. And you'll see in a minute that these are the perfect size to use for this. So I'm going to take out my wall tile and it's just a real flimsy piece of plastic. It has a peel off part on the back for your adhesive. And then I am going to take my little box and you can see this is the perfect size. It fits that center square just perfectly. So I'm going to prep my box. It has a little raffia bow on it and then the words have an actual like kind of raised glitter uh, effect to them. So I'm going to remove that bow and then I'm going to use some sandpaper and just sand this until it is smooth. For my first piece, I am going to cut out the center square of this tile and it will fit on my little box perfectly. These tiles cut very easily with just a regular pair of scissors because like I said, they are just kind of a flimsy plastic material. I was kind of surprised to find out that the adhesive on these tiles is only around the very outside edge, so there's no adhesive in this center part. I'm not sure how good that is if you're going to put these on an actual wall, but I can work with this even though it doesn't have any adhesive in this center part, I can just put some glue on the back and glue it to my little box. I'm going to use my hot glue gun on the low setting so I don't melt the plastic tile but you could use just some other type of adhesive such as this Weld Bond or E6000. For my other tile, I am going to cut out the corner uh, so that I have a different pattern because I want uh, these two to be different. So I'm just going to cut out the corner of this tile, which means you could make four tiles out of this one uh, self-adhesive sheet, which is really cool. Since I didn't have an exact line that I was cutting on for this square, I am using a ruler and a thin Sharpie marker just to draw a nice straight reference line so that I know right where to cut. Once I have my tile pieces cut out, I'm going to add some hot glue to them and just glue them to the top of those little wood boxes. I would recommend going light with the hot glue just to prevent the chance of possibly melting the plastic material these tiles are made of. Now I'm going to paint my pieces using some chalk paint by Waverly in the color Truffle. This is a dark brown. And I am going to paint this uh, with a nice good coat to make sure that all of that silver color is covered. And I will paint the sides of the box as well. So now that those are painted brown, I am going to let them dry thoroughly. And then I'm going to come in with some uh, ivory colored chalk paint. This is actually a color called chiffon cream. It's by Rust-Oleum. I picked this up at Walmart and um, it's just more of an off white instead of a white white. I'm going to get a little bit of paint on a paintbrush and wipe off any excess and then I'm going to lightly run my brush over the top of this tile. I'm going to go in the same direction so you can see I'm just going back and forth in the same direction uh, and I'm going to let the raised areas of the tile pick up this ivory colored paint. This is really going to bring out the design on the tile and honestly, it's like really fun to see it kind of come to life. When you're doing this, you want to do it with a dry brush and you want to use just a little bit of paint because you can always add more, but if you get too much, 
then you're probably going to have to start over uh, and paint brown over the top and then let that dry and start over again. So start light and if you want to add more then you can add more. Once I'm finished with that and the white paint is completely dry, I'm going to come in with some metallic gold paint. This is a champagne gold, which is not quite as yellowy as just a regular gold. And I wanted it to be a little more subtle, and so I chose this. If you wanted a darker metallic, you could use just a gold gold, or you could use even like a bronze color would be pretty. And I am just using a paintbrush and I am lightly going over uh, the raised areas. And uh, this is basically like what I did with the white paint, but I'm just being a lot more um, specific on where I'm putting the paint. I chose to leave the sides of my boxes just the solid brown. I felt like that made the top of the tiles just stand out more. You could do that differently if you like. But now that mine's all finished, I'm going to give it a coat of matte clear sealer just so that that paint stays onto the plastic tile material. I am really pleased with how these turned out. I just did the set of two. You could do a set of four like was in the inspiration picture. You could make them larger using one sheet of those tiles for each square. And you could mount them on a thin piece of wood or foam core board. It's really versatile and you can uh, just change it up to fit your decor. The next project is this cute little village that can be styled to use any time of year. I will be using two packages of these mirrored wall stickers as well as a couple of these little unfinished wood palettes. Both of these I picked up at Dollar Tree. And to paint my project I'm going to be using this Kills brand white chalk paint that I picked up at Walmart. The first thing I'm going to do is glue my two little palettes together. I'm going to glue them end to end so that I have one longer palette. And I am using the super glue wood glue from Dollar Tree as well as just a little bit of hot glue to help hold it together while that wood glue dries. Next I'm going to take my wall stickers and I'm going to peel them off of the paper and I'm going to stick them on the cardboard that was in the package that they came in um, because the stickers are pretty thin and so I want to give them a little bit of a thicker backing to make them more sturdy. And once I have those stuck on the cardboard, I am going to use an X-Acto knife to cut out my little houses. And you will want to make sure that your blade is nice and sharp. That way you'll get a nice crisp cut and it will just be easier to do. And I did also cut out the little windows and shapes inside of the houses as well. Once I have those cut out, I'm going to use a piece of sandpaper just to get off any of the little rough edges of cardboard and make the uh, sides nice and smooth. The little mirrored stickers do come with a protective film over the top of them and because I am going to be spray painting these I don't want to leave that on because it might peel off and then my paint would peel off. So I'm going to remove all of the protective film from these houses as well. Once I remove that film the surface is really slick and shiny and so to get my spray paint to stick to it I am going to take my sandpaper and I am going to sand uh, all of my shapes to rough them up. Then I'm going to take all of my houses and my palette piece and give them uh, a couple of coats of the spray paint both on the front and the back side. Once my paint was all dry, I did notice I had a few places that were still a little bit rough on the edges uh, where the cardboard didn't cut real clean. And again, I think that's just because I didn't have a sharp enough blade in my X-Acto knife. So I'm just using some scissors to clean them up a little bit. 
and now I can assemble this and honestly I had originally planned to glue the houses to the little palette but then I got to playing around with it and I actually actually really like the fact that I could move these around so I can just put these down in the slots of the palette and move them around and they sit up on their own really well and so um, it's really fun this way because it makes it very versatile and it makes it really easy to store because if I had glued these on it would be really difficult to store this if I wanted to pack it away but this way I can just pull the little houses out and it will store flat and um, I love how I can switch this all around so let me show you a couple of ways that I styled this uh, just to give you a few ideas but really the possibilities are endless the first way I styled this was to just add some greenery to the uh, front of it in front of the houses and uh, I thought this just added just a little bit of color it makes it real farmhouse looking and if you don't like the stark white you could definitely dry brush this my husband thought I should dry brush it but I kind of like it uh, the way it is all white so uh, really it's just whatever your preference is I also thought this would be very fun and easy to switch up for holidays and so here I have added a couple of little heart clips that I got at Dollar Tree to a couple of the chimneys on the houses it makes it look like little uh, heart shaped smoke coming out of the chimneys and then I just added these little fairy lights that I also got at Dollar Tree they're a pink wire with little red lights so just some subtle uh, decor to go with the holiday And since you can take the houses out and move them around, here I have put houses on both ends and then I've put a candle and some Christmas greenery in the center and I really love how this looks too. This project is one that I originally made for Valentine's Day, but it could be displayed in your home year-round as well. For this project, I will be using this sign from Dollar Tree. This is a pretty standard size that they carry all the time. It's about nine and a quarter inches wide and about 13 and a half inches tall, and you can find it usually uh, during any time at Dollar Tree. And this one I actually got after summer for just 50 cents. I will also be using one pack of these wooden rulers and one package of these little wood heart ornaments and some jute twine. All of these are from Dollar Tree. Instead of the traditional red or pink for Valentine's, I am going to use this blue color. This is uh, called Cascade. It's by Folk Art, uh, and I picked it up, I think, at Hobby Lobby or Walmart. And then I'm also going to be using some ivory colored chalk paint, as well as some Waverly Antique Wax. I'm going to start by removing the hanger off of the sign as well as the label and then I am going to use a little sandpaper just to go over where that label was to uh, remove any of the adhesive that might be left. And then I'm going to give my sign a couple coats of that Cascade Blue paint. While my first coat of paint is drying, I'm going to take my wooden rulers, I'm going to remove the little plastic stickers that uh, have the measurements on them they just peel right off and then I'm going to sand the rulers down a little bit to remove the adhesive off of those then I'm going to measure how long I want my rulers to be they're going to be the same width as my sign so I'll mark those and then I'm going to use my miter box and saw to cut those down 
And I know I've said it many times before, but this is one of my favorite crafting tools. It's easy to get out just to make simple cuts like this. I will have it linked below in my favorite crafting tools. And I did sand off the edges where I cut the rulers just to get rid of any splinters. And then I'm going to give these a uh, couple coats of paint as well. Next I am marking the center point on the top and the bottom of my sign and I'm going to draw a line uh, vertically down the center of my sign and I'm just using a pencil and then I am going to kind of smear the pencil using a paper towel uh, to uh, kind of just spread that line out a little bit and this is to make it look like I have two separate boards. Next I'm going to add some dry brushing to my sign. I am using the Waverly Antique Wax. You can use just a dark brown or a black paint. Just get a very little bit on a dry brush and lightly uh, brush this across your project until um, it's as dark as you want. And you can see I'm going over that center line um, a little darker because I want that to look kind of like the shadow of the seam where the two pieces of wood would come together if you had two separate pieces of wood. And then I'll also dry brush on my two uh, smaller ruler pieces as well. Now I want to mark where I want to put the rulers on my sign. So I just kind of laying them on there and I decided to mark two inches up from the bottom and two inches down from the top. And that's where I'm going to place my rulers and I'm just going to attach them with some hot glue. I always like to use Gorilla Glue Sticks in my hot glue guns just because they hold a little bit stronger than just the regular glue sticks. I pick up my Gorilla Glue Sticks at Walmart. They do cost a little bit more than your regular glue sticks, but I think it's worth it if your projects stay together better. Next I'm going to take three of the wooden heart-shaped ornaments and I am going to stack them because these are pretty thin and I want uh, it to have a little bit of thickness to it. So I'm just going to uh, stack them together with a little bit of hot glue to hold them. Then I'm going to paint one side of my heart using that ivory colored chalk paint. And I am go also going to paint around the outside edge of my heart a little bit. And uh, I'm not going to worry about the cutout uh, sections in the center of the heart. I'm just going to leave those. And then I'll give the heart a little bit of dry brushing as well. I decided I wanted to add a little embellishment to my heart, so I'm going to use one of the little jute hangers that came in the packet of ornaments. And I had this little skeleton key. It's just a decorative little key that I had in my stash. And I'm going to tie that on using the jute uh, twine and just the little hole that's already in the heart uh, to hang it. Then I'm going to wrap some jute twine around my sign where I had attached the wooden rulers and I'm going to wrap it about three times and then secure it with some hot glue. Now it's time to attach that heart right in the center of my sign with a little bit of hot glue. And then I'm going to add a jute twine hanger back onto this sign. I didn't use the one that it came with because I wanted it to be a little bit longer. And that's all there is to this fun farmhouse valentine sign that could certainly be displayed all year long.
One of my favorite DIYs in 2022 was this Easter bunny and little bucket of carrots, and I'm looking forward to putting it out again for Easter this year. Let me show you how I made it. I will be using the wood bunny shape, and I'm going to remove the hanger from that. And since I couldn't find the gray chenille yarn at Dollar Tree, I picked up this large skein at Walmart. It was between six and seven dollars. It's way more than I need, but I will have it on hand to make more projects. I'm going to be wrapping my bunny in this yarn, so I am securing it to the back with my hot glue gun, and then I'm just going to start wrapping. So I'm going to start at the base of the ears and work down first, and I'm going to uh, wrap it around fairly tightly and then just secure it with hot glue wherever it needs it to help hold it in place. One suggestion and something I wish I would have done is to paint the bunny shape a light gray color first because then it will be easier to wrap the bunny and not have unfinished wood showing through. Once I get to the feet, I am going to just continue so that the main body part is covered. And I'm not going to worry about covering all parts of the feet because I'm going to be uh, going over them again. So I'm just finishing off the body and making sure that it is all covered with yarn. Next, I'm going to take my yarn and I am going to wrap it kind of in a diagonal direction across the feet. And I'm uh, doing this uh, just to uh, give it some dimension and um, just make it a little bit more interesting. Once I have the feet done, then I'm going to basically do the same thing with the ears. So I'm going to attach the yarn at the base of the ears on the back side and then just wrap it around. And again, I did use some hot glue to secure it when necessary. And then at the very tips of the ears, I used hot glue to finish it off. So now my whole bunny is wrapped in the chenille yarn and I had quite a bit of yarn left over. So I think uh, a couple of skeins from Dollar Tree would be plenty if you can find it, um, but I have a lot left over to use for another project. To finish my bunny off, I'm going to use this burlap ribbon that is also from Dollar Tree, just to tie a bow around one of the ears. So that's all there is to this cute little bunny, but now we need to make a little something to go along with her. So I'm going to be using this little galvanized bucket from Dollar Tree. And I'll be using these twine carrots. As well as one of these little chalkboard picks. These come in a four pack from Dollar Tree. I'll be using a little bit of floral foam and also some of this green Spanish moss. This is from Walmart, but you can pick up moss at Dollar Tree. I'm going to start by cutting a piece of my floral foam 
and putting it into my bucket and I want it to only go about halfway up um, the bucket so I don't want it to go all the way to the top I just need a little bit in the bottom as a filler then I'm going to add a little bit of moss just enough to tuck down around that piece of foam to hide it then I'll place a few of my carrots kind of randomly in the top of the bucket. I'm going to put five in there. Typically an odd number is uh, what you would want. Then I'm going to make my little sign using the little chalkboard pick. And Dollar Tree does carry these chalk writers. However, they have a pretty wide tip and they're hard to write on small things with. So uh, I use a chalk marker that I picked up at, I believe, Michael's quite a while ago. I've had them for years and they last forever, but they have a more fine tip and they're easier to write on smaller items. Then I'm going to just poke that down into the foam that's in the bottom of the bucket so it will stand up. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of the moss just to build it up and I want to make it a little bit more messy and more organic looking. This project I will be making this set of wall hooks and using the Cricut to customize them for spring. The materials I will be using are this sign from Dollar Tree, it is one of the longer skinnier signs, as well as three of these wall hooks that I also picked up at Dollar Tree. I got three different shapes of these but they all have the same type of hook on them. I will also be using two of the larger five gallon paint stir sticks, some white chalk paint, and also some pastel colored chalk paint or acrylic craft paint will work as well. For this project, I'm going to be using the Smart Vinyl, and while Cece the cat doesn't seem to be too impressed, I love the Smart Vinyl because you don't have to use a mat in order to cut your design. I'm going to start by removing all of the hooks, hangers, and labels off of my little signs and I will save those hooks and hangers because I will be reusing them. I'm also going to remove the hanger and the embellishments from my long sign as well. Next I'm going to glue my paint stir sticks on the what's the front of this sign but it's going to be the back of my sign and I am using some Gorilla Hot Glue. Uh, I would also recommend adding a little bit of E6000 just to give this a stronger hold. Adding these stir sticks to this sign is really going to provide some stability because the Dollar Tree sign is not real thick and so it's a little bit flimsy. I'm also going to add a little bit of hot glue into those holes where the hanger was just to fill them. You could use wood filler. I kind of like using the hot glue and then I just sand off uh, anything that is not smooth. Then I'm going to paint my sign using my white chalk paint and on what will be the back of my sign I'm going to give this several coats just to give it a nice finished look. And then on the front of my sign, I'm going to lay out where my hooks will be and then I'm going to only paint what will show on the board, um, not underneath where I'm going to glue these hooks. That way when I glue them down, it will be a stronger bond. 
And then I'm going to take a little bit of black chalk paint and a dry brush and I'm just going to lightly dry brush over the tops of my white paint just to give this a little bit of a worn aged look. Next I mixed some of my pastel paints with a little bit of white to kind of lighten them up and then I'm painting my signs. I was going to do one in each of these colors but I decided not to do the pink and just to do the yellow and the lavender. And now that the paint is dry on these, I'm going to dry brush these with a little bit of white paint, just very lightly, just to uh, kind of lighten them up and give them a little bit of dimension as well. To add a little bit of a border, I'm just using a Sharpie marker and going around with a little bit of a broken line around each of my signs. Then I'm going to add my hooks back onto my signs. And before I attach the signs, I am going to add the hangers on the back of my sign to use these to hang my wall hooks. So I'm just reusing the ones that were on the back of those hooks to begin with. Next, I'm going to use some E6000 to glue these signs to my backing and I'm also going to use a little bit of hot glue just so that they'll will adhere right away um, while that E6000 is drying. In 2022, Dollar Tree started carrying these little wood easels, and I love them for DIY projects. So the next two projects will be using these wooden easels. I found these wood easels in the Crafter Square section at Dollar Tree, and I was really excited to use these in some DIYs. So I'm going to be using this, and I'm also going to be using one of these unfinished wood trays also from Dollar Tree. To start off, I'm going to remove the label from the back of the tray. A really easy hack for this is to use a hairdryer or a heat gun. And then I am going to uh, just go over this lightly with some sandpaper just to get rid of any little splinters. Then I'm going to give this a coat of paint using some black chalk paint. This is uh, Waverly chalk paint from Walmart uh, in the color ink. It's basically just black. And of course, you can paint this any color you want to customize it to go with uh, the decor or the look that you are wanting. And I am painting the entire piece inside the little squares, the tops of the edges, and also around the sides and the back. I chose four different photos that I wanted to print off and I just printed these on cardstock on my printer and then I'm going to use my paper trimmer to cut them apart and then I measured the inside of the little boxes in my wooden tray and I'm going to just trim the photos to fit inside those boxes. So now I'm going to use some matte finish Mod Podge and I am going to just put these inside the little boxes. So I am putting a good amount of Mod Podge on the bottom of each square and then I will put my photo on. Now I know some people uh, put Mod Podge over the top right away. I feel like that makes it wrinkle more and so I will uh, put the Mod Podge down put my photo down and then let that dry for just a little bit before I actually go over the top with another coat of Mod Podge. 
And once I've gone over the top of all four pictures, I'm going to set that aside to dry. And I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to embellish this, so like any good crafter, I dug out my box of miscellaneous embellishments and just started digging through. There are all kinds of things in here. I have um, old keys, I have broken necklaces, I have uh, brooches, I have just miscellaneous beads and um, embellishments left from my old scrapbooking days. There's just all kinds of stuff in here. So I just started digging through to see what I might want to use. So I decided on this ribbon from Dollar Tree and I am just going to wrap this around the outside of the little tray. And I'll use a little hot glue to secure it along the way. And then I found this little button brad, I guess you'd call it, just in my scrapbooking stuff. I'm going to put a little piece of the ribbon through that button and I'm going to put that on the top of the easel. I also added a little charm, but the battery died on my camera so I didn't get that on film, but I just hung it with some little twine from the button and you'll see that here in a minute. Then I used some hot glue and attached this to the top of the easel. Now when you glue something on the top, you want to make sure you leave that center back leg of the easel free so it well, can open and close. And that's all I'm going to do to this one. Of course, you can embellish yours as little or as much as you like. Another project I made using the wooden easels was this recipe holder and this would make a great housewarming gift or Mother's Day gift or just fun to keep for yourself. For my next project I'm going to be using this cutting board sign that was in Dollar Tree for Easter and I'm going to be removing the little uh, tacks that are in the corners of the sign just because I don't want to get paint on them. I am going to save them because I will be putting them back on the sign. Next I'm going to use some chalk paint. This is Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color of linen white and I'm going to paint over that uh, design that's in the center. I do recommend going over this with a very light coat of paint at first because the design is just paper. If you get it too wet, it will kind of start to wrinkle or bubble. So just do a light coat at first and let that dry completely before you do a second or third coat. And I think I did have to do about four, uh, maybe even five coats to cover some of the, the design on this. Next I am using just a teeny bit of Waverly Antique Wax and this little dry chippy brush from Dollar Tree and I am dry brushing a little bit of this brown paint over the top just to uh, get rid of kind of that stark white and have it blend in a little bit more. And then I'm also going to add some of this same paint or the antique wax uh, to the back part of the sign to darken it up a little bit. And if you are new to crafting, dry brushing just means putting a very little bit of paint on a dry brush and lightly brushing it over your project so that just a little bit of paint stays on your project. So I want to add a design to the center of my sign here and there are lots of options such as this uh, wall decal from Dollar Tree. You can use part of that. They also have uh, lots of other styles, uh, for any kind of decor that you would like to use. 
I'm going to go more with a farmhouse style on this, so I am using these rub-on transfers that I picked up in the Crafter Square section at Dollar Tree. So this is going to be a decor piece that is also multifunctional. So I'm making this as like a recipe holder, but it could also hold just a, a picture. So I had this little clothespin in my stash. It was gray and I wanted it to be brown. So I'm just giving it a coat of brown paint and then I am going to hot glue this to the top of my sign. Next I'm going to cut out the rub-on transfers that I want to use and position them on my piece before I ever start attaching any of them, I'm going to lay out all of them until I'm happy with the design. Once I'm happy with the layout, I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing from the rub-on transfers and go ahead and transfer them onto the project. And I like to use a little scraper tool for this. You could use uh, like a credit card. Uh, and depending on what surface you're putting these on, often they stick really easily without having to press much. Um, I found I did have to press more on this project. And if any of the edges are sticking up, you can just press those down really carefully with your finger. Now, just so you don't think that everything always goes perfect for me, I wanted to show you this. I did have trouble with the uh, transfer on this one word it did not want to stick and I I had to just pull it up with part of the letters missing and then I decided to go over the top of it with a thin sharpie marker to fill it in it's not perfect but it will do and sometimes sometimes those things happen and you just have to improvise so I think maybe my paint wasn't completely dry and that might have caused it but anyway this is what I got. I do want to protect these rub-on transfers so I am going to use some of the matte finish Mod Podge and very carefully go over the top of those transfers to seal them onto the sign. After the Mod Podge has had a chance to dry, I'm going to take some of this black and white check ribbon from Dollar Tree and some greenery and add uh, this to the top of my sign. I just created a little bow and secured it with a little pipe cleaner and then I hot glued that to the top and then I am tucking in a few uh, sprigs of greenery just to tie it all in and finish it off. Then for the last step, I'm going to add those little tacks back in the corners of the white part of the sign. And I did add a little bit of hot glue just to help secure them because since I had popped them out, they were a little bit looser than they were before. And the last step is to add a little hot glue at the bottom of the easel to attach the sign. I'm only attaching it at the bottom because I don't want to put hot glue at the top to keep it the easel from opening. I love how this turned out. I think it's a beautiful decor piece just the way it is, but it's also functional. It will hold a recipe card or even a photo. And if you like to pull up recipes on the internet, you can also set your phone or tablet on this while you're cooking or baking. What a great gift to give to someone who likes to cook or bake or uh, as a housewarming gift or wedding present. I am really happy with how this turned out. This farmhouse flower wall mirror was so fun to make and it looks so high end and you are not going to believe how budget friendly it is to make.
For this project, I will be using four packages of these aluminum cookie sheets from Dollar Tree and one of these round mirrors, also from Dollar Tree. Each package of cookie sheets comes with two in a package, and these are pretty flimsy, so I am actually going to glue these together just to give it a little bit more stability. And to do this, I am going to be using some E6000. I wouldn't recommend using hot glue because it's going to leave ridges that are going to show uh, in the foil or the aluminum. So um, I think that the E6000 works better. I'm going to uh, spread it out and just make a thin layer and then press these together and put some heavy books on it and let them dry. And I'm going to repeat this with the three remaining packages of cookie sheets. So I cut out a couple of patterns for my petals and I will put the dimensions of mine in the description box so you can look and see what sizes I used for mine. And then I am just going to use those patterns to trace onto the aluminum sheets. And it doesn't really have to write on the sheets because it just makes an indentation. I'm just using a ballpoint pen and I'm tracing around these. I'm going to cut out 12 large large petals and 12 small petals. And like I said, you will need to use all four sets of the uh, aluminum cookie sheets for this. Once I have those all traced out, I'm going to use an old pair of scissors just to cut these out. And it is really nice because you can use just regular scissors to cut these out. I like to cut the edge off of the trays first. It makes it a little bit easier. And I do recommend that you be very careful so you don't cut yourself. I have never cut myself doing this. There they doesn't seem to be super sharp, but there is that potential, so you just want to be careful. I'm going to be using some different colors of gray paint. I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant, and then just a lighter gray acrylic paint. I'm also using this Truffle, which is a dark brown colored chalk paint. My goal here is to make these petals not look like aluminum foil, so I'm going to be painting them. I'm going to be using a technique I kind of came up with to make these look more like galvanized metal. So I'm going to start with my dark gray chalk paint first, and you could just use acrylic paint. It doesn't have to be chalk paint. This is just what I have on hand. And I'm using an old paintbrush because this is kind of hard on your paintbrush because I'm just going to pounce that paint all over, and I'm going to twist and turn my brush as I'm doing this and just to um, kind of make a, a mottled look on the uh, petals and I'm going to do this on all of my petals. Once I've done the dark gray on all of the petals I'm going to come in with the light gray color and I'm just going to do the same thing and the petals do not have to be dry. You could have some uh, wet paint on these. I like it to be a little bit dry but it's okay if there are some wet spots because um, if it blends together a little bit that's all right. So you can see I let some of the dark gray paint still show through and now I'm going to mix the two colors of paint so I have kind of a medium shade of gray and I'm going to go over it a third time and I'm just building this up. It's adding dimension and so I want um, all three colors to kind of show through and uh, just give it that galvanized metal look. So now I want to make it look even a little bit more rustic. So I'm going to take an even lighter gray color of paint and just a old brush. This is a 
chip brush that I got from Dollar Tree that I think works great for dry brushing and I am going to just dry brush a little bit of this really light gray paint across the petals because I want to lighten them up just a little bit. And next I'm going to come in with some of the truffle or dark brown color and I am going to dry brush just on the edges, on the ends of the petals, and then maybe just a few spots here and there. Um, this is to really give it that rustic look, make it look a little bit rusty or uh, just really aged. And so um, even though I was lightening them up, now I'm adding that dark accent. And it's all of these different colors playing together that's really going to uh, make this look more authentic and make it look more like galvanized metal. So next I'm going to prep my mirror for paint and because this is a very slick plastic frame on this mirror I am just running some sandpaper over the frame. This is going to help the paint stick to it better. And then after sanding I'm going to take a damp paper towel and I am going to wipe off any of the residue left from the sandpaper. So at first I started to paint this with just a white paint. This is like a linen white chalk paint, um, but I decided that I did not really like uh, how the white looked with the galvanized metal looking petals. And so I went ahead and uh, finished painting this uh, kind of as a primer coat on the mirror, but I'm actually going to change up the color and use a different color to paint this because as you can see the white just doesn't really look great with those petals. So I went through my paint and I found this yellow chalk paint. This is called Summer Porch I think is the color and uh, just a really pretty summery kind of uh, vintage yellow color and I think this is going to look really pretty. So I did give this a couple coats of the yellow paint and I'm really liking this color, but I do want to also give it kind of that rustic aged look. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my white chalk paint and I'm just going to dry brush a little bit of that on the frame. And I did get a little bit of paint on the mirror and if that happens you can scrape it off easily. Uh, just be careful not to scratch the mirror because these are Dollar Tree mirrors. They're not super expensive or a high quality but uh, I just used a, a little tool and scraped off the paint and then wiped it clean with a paper towel. And then I am going to take the brown uh, paint that I used to kind of make that rusty look on the petals and I'm going to dry brush very lightly on the frame as well just to kind of break up the yellow a little bit and give it more of an aged look so the whole piece looks cohesive. So now it's time to assemble this and I am going to just be using some Gorilla Hot Glue in my glue gun and I just want to say if you are going to use this like outside on a porch, uh, I would, wouldn't like put it out in the weather but if it's like under a covered porch or something, I think that would be fine. I would just recommend sealing all of your petals as well as the frame of the mirror and then I would use like E6000 to adhere all of the petals to the back of the mirror. But mine's going to be indoors so I'm just using the Gorilla Hot Glue sticks. These are going to work great. So I am putting the first petal underneath the little hanger on the back because I want to use that hanger to be able to hang my mirror and that little hanger is going to be perfectly fine because this is a very lightweight piece. It's not heavy at all. So then I'm going to take my second small petal. We're going to put the small petals on first. 
So I'm going to take the second small petal and put it straight across from that first petal that I just put on. And if you're using hot glue, uh, I did find it made the uh, aluminum sheets very hot. So using the little finger protectors from uh, Dollar Tree is recommended here. Then I'm going to take and put two petals across from each other so that I have them all evenly spaced. And you can see how I'm doing that here. And then I'm going to glue two small petals in between each of the petals that are on uh, there already. So there's a total of 12 petals and they're spaced out evenly. Next, I'm going to glue my large petals on and these are going to go in between the small petals so you'll be able to see here I am uh, just putting them um, on top but I am putting them kind of in between so they're centered um, in between the two smaller petals and I am just going to uh, put all 12 petals around uh, this in the same way so that they're all spaced evenly. If you used E6000 to glue your petals on, you'll want to wait until that glue is dry before you pick this up. But mine is uh, dry pretty quickly with the hot glue. And so for the last step, I'm just going to bend my petals up just a little bit to give them a little bit of dimension so it doesn't look so flat. And uh, that is it. This project is finished and I am super happy with how it came out. If you like these faux metal flowers, I do have several other videos where I have made different styles of faux metal flowers. I will put the links to those down below and also um, in the card above. I'll put a link to that video as well. to make one of those porch leaning signs for a long time but I didn't want to make it out of Dollar Tree items because I need it to be pretty heavy weight. We live out in the country and we get a lot of wind out here so I needed it to be pretty sturdy so I picked up this board it is four feet long which that tells you how tall I am and it's about one inch in width actually maybe a little less but I picked this up at Home Depot I think I paid about seven dollars for it and so it's a nice heavy piece of wood I think it will not blow over as well so I'm going to give this a try for my porch leaner sign and um, just keep in mind that different sizes of wood and different types of wood may uh, cost different prices. So uh, just check out what is available at your home improvement store and see if you can get a deal on something. So now let's turn this into something fun for my porch. I'm going to start out by using this chiffon cream chalk paint from Rust-Oleum. I picked this up at Walmart and I am going to give the entire board uh, several coats of this paint. I'm going to paint the sides and the back and just make sure that it is completely covered because this will help protect the wood from the elements since it will be outside. Next I'm going to use some black chalk paint and dry brush on my board. Again, going with kind of the more farmhouse look and I'm just going to um, make this board look a little bit more weathered and worn. And when I'm dry brushing a piece, I usually put a little bit more on the edges and the corners because those are typically the places where things get worn. And then I like to put just a few random darker spots uh, just to make it look a little bit more authentic. 
I found these wood letters at Walmart. They are $1.67 each, but they are a nice size and it's exactly what I wanted because I wanted something that had some dimension to it. I didn't want to use vinyl. I wanted something that was raised. So I picked up all the letters for the word welcome, except for the O, because for that I am going to be using different things. And first I'm going to be using this butterfly. I picked this up in uh, the Crafter Square aisle at Dollar Tree. I'm going to paint all of my letters using that same black paint that I used to dry brush on the board. Then once the black paint is completely dry, I'm going to use my same chiffon cream or off-white colored paint to dry brush on the letters. And this is just going to kind of give them a little bit more dimension. So now it's time to add the pop of color. I am going to be using two shades of purple and two shades of kind of bluish green to paint this butterfly. And this is super easy. First, I'm going to paint the butterfly with a base coat of the chiffon cream paint. Once that layer of paint is completely dry, I am going to take an old paintbrush and I'm going to take my colors and I'm going to start just kind of dabbing them onto the butterfly and I'm going to just build this in layers and so you'll kind of see the design that I decided to do but I'm starting with my darker purple next to the body of the butterfly and like I said I'm just kind of pouncing my brush on there um, to give it some texture and help the colors to blend together a little bit. So I'm adding my lighter purple next to that dark purple and then I'm going to kind of mix the two colors of purple together and go kind of right in between uh, to help blend this so I don't have like a really uh, defined line. I want the colors just to kind of blend. Then I'm going to take my bluish green paint and I'm going to uh, go around the outside of the wings and then I'm going to add the lighter color of blue um, in kind of the center of the wings and then I'm just going to keep blending these colors all together. Next I'm going to take some of the black paint and a smaller paintbrush and I'm just going to paint the little butterfly body. Now it's time to assemble my sign, so I'm going to lay out my letters, making sure that I'm happy with the spacing, and then I'm going to glue them to the board using the E6000 glue and a little bit of hot glue. To add a hanger to my butterfly, I'm going to be using a black zip tie from Dollar Tree and I'm going to make a loop and I'm using this to act as a hanger but I also want it to kind of look like the antenna of the butterfly. So uh, I'm kind of sizing it accordingly and then I'm going to use some E6000 and hot glue and attach this to the back of the butterfly. An alternative to the butterfly would be to make a little wreath for the O. For this, I'm going to show you how to make a really simple one using these bamboo rings from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use the smaller one, and then I'm just going to paint it using that same black paint. I had this little bunch of lavender that I picked up at Walmart. I think you can get it at Dollar Tree too, but I kind of like the one from Walmart better. I think it looks more realistic. And I'm just going to cut this apart using a pair of wire cutters. I'm just cutting off each of the individual stems.
Next I'm going to use some zip ties. You can pick these up at Dollar Tree and I am going to uh, just layer my little stems of lavender around the wreath and then put zip ties around every so often to hold them in place. So one of the reasons I wanted to make my own sign was because I wanted it to be interchangeable for different seasons. So I'm going to add a hook and I am using this safety hook. I picked this up at Walmart as well, I believe. And uh, this is because of the wind. I don't want whatever I have hanging there to blow off. So I'm using that little safety hook. And so I just drilled a little hole and then I'm screwing that in. It's very tight and it's going to hold really well. So because this hook has that little bendable piece of metal across the top of it, I can hook anything on that and it's going to hold it on there securely and the wind will not blow it off. Since this will be outside, I definitely want to put several coats of the clear matte sealer on it and on my butterfly as well. Another option if you want a more traditional farmhouse look is putting one of these little metal windmills from Dollar Tree on the sign. I think this is very cute too. I love how versatile this sign is that I can change it out for the seasons or just get different looks. And I made this sign for under $25, and there are interchangeable signs like this on Etsy going for over $100. The next project is this Americana patriotic flag that highlights our Pledge of Allegiance. For this next project, I am going to use this palette sign from Dollar Tree, and I am going to be turning this into a little flag. So I'm going to remove my label off of the back, and I decided just to leave the hanger because I might want to hang this up somewhere, and I didn't mind it being on there for my tiered tray. So I'm going to start by finding the center of my palette and just marking that on the first or the top two slats. This is going to show me where I need to paint my blue square in the top left corner. And for this, I will be using the Midnight Blue Acrylic Paint and just painting just the front sides of those top two slats um, on the left-hand side. And this is going to be the blue portion of my flag. And just a tip here, if you use a flat brush like I am using here, it is much easier to get a nice straight line than if you use a round brush. I did accidentally get some paint on the little wood piece behind the slats and I didn't want that there and so I just took a wet q-tip and wiped it off before it dried and that worked really well. Since this little palette sign only has four slats, I wanted to kind of divide them up so I could have more stripes on my flag. So I am using a ruler. I'm just eyeballing this and I'm going to paint the top half of that first slat using the red paint. And then I decided instead of painting uh, the bottom half of it white, I would just leave it natural. So really my white stripes are going to be the natural wood color instead. I did this just because I felt like it would make it a little bit more rustic or farmhouse, but if you want to paint it white, that would look great too. The bottom slat on this palette sign is a little bit wider than the others, and I did want to have a red stripe on the top and on the bottom of the flag, so I did put a narrower uh, stripe of uh, red on the bottom just to kind of finish it off. For my stars, I am going to take a really tiny liner paintbrush and a little bit of white paint with just a little bit of water in it so that it kind of flows a little bit nicer. And I am going to paint my stars onto 
the flag. Now, obviously, I'm not putting 50 stars on here. This is just uh, a few stars for uh, you know a, a decoration. This is not a true flag, but uh, I just put four on each slat, and so I have a total of eight. And uh, if you aren't comfortable using a liner brush to do this, because it it can be a little challenging if you're not used to doing it. You could use a paint marker or you could put on vinyl using your Cricut or even just some rub-on transfers. I really wanted to add the Pledge of Allegiance to my flag, so I am using a pencil and writing out the Pledge of Allegiance on the white stripes. And uh, I'm using a pencil because I wasn't sure of kind of the spacing and the size and everything. And then I am going to go over this using a fine point Sharpie marker. And then once the marker has had time to completely dry, I'm going to use a white eraser and lightly go over any pencil marks that are showing. But you want to make sure that your Sharpie is completely dry so that it doesn't smear. And I am super happy with how this came out. The next project is this gorgeous fall centerpiece made from Dollar Tree items. So let me show you how I put it together. For this project, I will be using two of the wire pumpkin wreath frames from Dollar Tree. I'll also be using one of these wood planks from the Crafter Square section at Dollar Tree, as well as some floral foam. And I'll be using several of these black zip ties that I picked up at Dollar Tree as well. For the candle holder, in the middle of my centerpiece, I chose this vase from Dollar Tree. I thought the colors would go really pretty with my florals that I will be using, but you could use a clear vase uh, or any candle holder of your choosing. I'm also going to be using some of this amaranthus from Dollar Tree and a little bit of jute twine. And in my last trip to Dollar Tree, I picked up these fun pumpkins that I will be using in this centerpiece as well. For my lighting in this, I will be trying out this little LED candle. I picked it up at Hobby Lobby for just a few dollars. Um, or I'm also going to try these little fairy lights, the battery powered fairy lights from Dollar Tree and see which one I like best. To start off with, I'm going to take my two wire wreath forms and place them back to back and then zip tie them together. I do want to give a shout out to Catherine from Do It On A Dime, who I got the idea of putting these two frames together like this from. So thank you, Catherine. She put little pumpkins in hers and it was really cute. I'm going to be making a centerpiece with mine. So I'm just taking a little bit of Antique Wax by Waverly and giving my little wood plank a good coat of this um, on both sides and around the edges. Then I'll wipe off the excess and just let that dry really well. And even though this really isn't going to show very much in our finished project, I just wanted it to have a nice finished look. So now I'm going to use my hot glue gun and some Gorilla Glue sticks, and I am gluing my pumpkin frame to the wood plank just to give it a base so that it will stand upright on its own. Now I'm going to take my little foam block and I am going to cut it down because it's just a little bit too tall. And so I have found that these little metal rulers from Dollar Tree work really well for this and you can just slice it right through the floral foam and I think it works great. And now I'm going to glue that floral foam right on top of the bottom of the wire pumpkin frame where it is glued to that wood plank. And I did push it down so that the wires were kind of going into the foam. Next I'm going to take my jute twine and wrap it around the neck of my vase a couple of times. Just tie a knot in that just to add a little bit of an accent to it. And this is going to tie it together with those pumpkins that I'll be using as well. 
and I did decide to cover my floral foam with a little bit of Spanish moss. This is probably optional because the florals are going to disguise the floral foam for the most part, but I just didn't want any of that floral foam showing through at all, so I covered the block with the Spanish moss. So my little vase is going to sit in the middle of that floral foam, and then I am going to just take some of my leaf florals that I got at Dollar Tree, and I love these colors they have this year, and I cut them apart, and I just start arranging them, moving them around until I really like the way that it looks. I did decide to add a little hot glue to the bottom of my vase just to help hold it in place and that made it a little bit easier to work with here as well. These braided raffia pumpkins are on a dowel, like a little wooden dowel, so I used some wire cutters to trim that down a little bit and then I stuck three of those into my arrangement. And to tie in with my vase, I am going to use some of these burgundy amaranthus from Dollar Tree. And since I felt like they were a little bit long, I actually cut them in half and uh, just stuck them uh, randomly in the arrangement. And I felt like this really tied that top color of the vase into the whole floral arrangement. Now that I'm satisfied with my florals, I'm going to add my light. This is the little LED light that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I love these, they look so realistic, but I do wanna see what the little fairy lights look like as well. And I did end up adding a couple of little leaves, uh, just kind of laying them over that battery pack to disguise them. But let me know in the comments below, which one did you like the best, the little LED candle or the fairy lights? I think I am leaning to the little flickering LED light. It just looks so natural and I just really am pleased with how this turned out. It's going to look beautiful on my table for fall. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for coming back and watching this video. And if you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. If you enjoy Dollar Tree DIYs and DIYs on a budget, then be sure to subscribe because I do a lot of those here on this channel. This DIY is a dupe of this cute fall truck decor from Kirkland's. On sale, it's $32. We're going to make it for less. For this project, I'm going to be using this spring truck sign that I had in my stash, but I have seen truck signs at Dollar Tree for fall as well. I'm also going to be using one of these wooden rulers from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be using the pumpkins off of this floral stem from Dollar Tree. This eucalyptus that I'll be using, I picked up at Walmart. I believe it was about $3, but it is really nice quality and a good size. And then I'll also be using just a few uh, pieces of greenery and some little white berries. These are just kind of leftovers from other projects, but I'll be using those to fill in on my project. And I'm going to be painting my truck using this ink colored chalk paint from Waverly. I'm going to start by removing the hanger and then I am going to cut out the back window of this truck and I don't want mine to be quite as big as the one that is shown here on this sign so I'm just measuring in a little ways and then I'm going to uh, cut out where I marked using a razor knife. I 
I just placed a little cutting mat from Dollar Tree underneath my sign and used a razor knife with a sharp blade in it. And this did take several times of going over this. Uh, so I definitely need to be careful doing this because you do have to apply some good pressure to get this cut out. But uh, I just was careful and uh, went over it multiple times to get that little window cut out. Once I had it cut out, I took some sandpaper and just went over this to uh, smooth out those cut edges. And uh, then I also went over the front of the sign where it had some glitter from the design uh, just to kind of smooth that out as well. I also used just a little craft spatula to remove the Hello Spring sign from uh, this truck sign because I don't need that on there and this just popped right off it was very easy to take off and it did rip the paper a little bit but that doesn't matter because this is actually going to be the back of my sign next I'm going to take my black chalk paint and I am going to paint both sides of the truck completely with the black paint Next I'm going to take my wood ruler and remove those little plastic strips on the sides. They just peel right off. Then I'm going to cut it down so that it is a little bit longer than the width of my truck. And this is one that I already had. It was painted with an off-white uh, color and then dry brushed with a little bit of brown paint. And so I'm just going to use it because it's what I already had. I'm first going to write the words welcome fall with a pencil on my little ruler and then when I'm happy with how that looks I'm going to use a sharpie marker and just trace over that pencil. And then using some hot glue I'm going to attach that right over the top of the tires so it looks like the bumper of the truck. Next I want to add a couple of tail lights to my truck. So I went through my stash and I found some uh, larger size brads that were uh, left over from my scrapbooking days. So I'm going to use those. If you don't have something like that, you could just paint some uh, dots on to be your tail lights. So I'm just using some wire cutters to cut off the prongs of those brads and then I'm going to hot glue them to my sign. Next I'm going to cut some pieces of the eucalyptus and lay this on the back of my truck. I want it to kind of look like my truck is piled full of all of this fall uh, greenery and pumpkins. I really like these little pumpkins on this stem that you can find at Dollar Tree, although when you pull them off, then your pumpkins no longer have a stem. And so I'm just using one of those uh, skewers that's from like the barbecue section at Dollar Tree and I'm cutting little pieces of that. I'm going to use some Waverly Antique Wax and paint them and then I will glue them to my pumpkins. I'm going to continue laying out my florals on this until I like the way it looks. So I'm just going to place my pumpkins and then my little greenery stems and white berries uh, until I have it just the way I want it and then I will start to glue it on. And one thing that I do is once I have it where I'm happy with it, I snap a picture with my phone and that way I can use that for reference uh, as I'm gluing it together. Because you can see here, I kind of have to take it back apart so that I can start gluing things down from the bottom working up. To 
to finish this off, I'm just going to add a jute twine hanger to the top using those holes that were already in this sign. I'll just push that through and tie some knots on the back side, and this is all finished. And I have to say, I love the way this looks. I love the contrast of the black truck. I know a lot of people use the red truck or even like the blue truck, but I really like the contrast of the black. Let me know what you think. For this next project, I'm going to be using three different sized pumpkin signs from Dollar Tree. I'll also be using this wood hanging sign that I got from Dollar Tree. There's no dimensions on it. I would say it's about 18 inches long and about five inches wide. A couple of other things from Dollar Tree that I'll be using are these color your own ornaments in the leaf shape and one of these leaf harvest DIY pins. And I'll also be using some jute twine. For paint I'll be using this Rust-Oleum chalk paint. <laughs> Did you see that? The lid almost came off. That could have been a disaster. Anyway, this is a chiffon cream. It's kind of an off-white color. And then I'll also be using a blue craft paint. This is the color Cascade by Folk Art. And I'll be using an orange paint. And this one's a little bright, so I'm actually going to be adding some brown to it as well. To prep my pumpkins, I'm going to remove all of the embellishments off of them and all of the labels. A heat tool can be very helpful for this. It helps loosen the glue and makes it a lot easier to get some of these things off. And they work great for labels too. I do have direct links to all of my favorite crafting tools in the description box below, as well as a link to my Amazon store, so be sure to check those out. If you use a heat tool on galvanized embellishments, make sure you be careful because it will make them very hot. And then another tip is if you have any glue left on your project, just sand over it with some sandpaper and that will help take it off as well as it will have the sawdust kind of stick to any of the stickiness that's still there and then it will not be sticky anymore. So I'm going to use the chiffon cream and I am going to paint the largest pumpkin using this paint. And I started painting and then I realized that I needed to fill the hole in this top of the stem where the hanger was. And I like to use hot glue for this sometimes. You could use wood filler, but I find that a hot glue works uh, well and dries a lot quicker. So my trick for this is to turn your project wrong side facing up and put a metal ruler underneath that hole that you're going to fill. Fill it with some hot glue and then hold it tightly down to the ruler until the glue is completely set. And then when you pop it off of the ruler, it will be flush and smooth and then you can paint over it. And I just repeat this process for any of the other pieces that have the holes in them as well. Okay, so now that that's taken care of, I can finish painting my large pumpkin with the chiffon cream paint. And I did end up putting two coats of paint on this. My medium-sized pumpkin I'm going to paint orange, and since my orange paint was really bright, I decided to add a little bit of brown to it uh, because I want more of a burnt orange color. Um, and then I didn't really like that, so I added a little bit of red paint to this as well, and that gave me the color that I wanted. And then for my smallest pumpkin, I am going to use that Cascade Blue colored paint and paint it. And this did take 
three or four coats to cover up that W on the front. So if I would have sanded it off to begin with, it probably would not have taken so many coats of paint, but I didn't. So if you are an impatient crafter like I am, the heat tool is great for helping to dry paint and you don't have to wait as long in between coats. So now that the paint is dry on my large pumpkin, I'm going to take a little bit of brown paint and a dry brush, and I'm going to dry brush on this pumpkin some lines that are kind of curved. This will help give the pumpkin dimension and make it look like it's more rounded. And I'm just doing this lightly at first, and then I'm going to keep adding a little bit until it's the uh, the darkness that I want and then I'm also going to add a little bit of highlighting just around the edges of the pumpkin and on the stem. On my orange and blue pumpkins I'm going to do some dry brushing using the chiffon cream colored paint and just uh, go around the edges to uh, highlight that and bring out a little more dimension on those as well. So now I'm going to add some fun detail to these. I am going to take the orange and the blue pumpkin and I'm going to take the end of a paintbrush and dip it in my paint and then I am going to dot polka dots on both of these pumpkins. Then I'm going to do the same thing using the brown paint on my off-white pumpkin. I've already filled in the holes on the top of my larger leaves using the hot glue and I'm removing the little clothespin off of the back of the small leaf and then I'm going to paint all of them using my same brown paint. Once all of the polka dots are dry, it's time to add my leaf embellishments and I'm going to use this berry garland to do that. So I'm just going to take a small piece and twist it a little bit and wrap it around the stem. I'm going to secure it with a little bit of hot glue on the back side of the leaf and then I am going to place that along the stem and wrap some jute twine around it, securing it to the pumpkin. And then I'll just tie a knot in the jute twine. And then I'm just going to repeat the same process on both the orange and the blue pumpkins. Next I'm going to take that unfinished wood plank sign from Dollar Tree and I am going to use this as a backing for my pumpkins. So I don't need to fill in the holes where I took out the hanger. I'm just going to be gluing the pumpkins to this. Because of the thickness of that small pumpkin in the front, this sign actually stands up on its own. You could add a hanger to this, but I think this would be perfect sitting on a fireplace mantle or a, a shelf, and I think it turned out so whimsical and cute. Going to be showing you how to DIY this snowman advent calendar or Christmas countdown and I will let you know that this project is a little bit more involved it's not an easy 10-minute project 
It's not hard, but it will take a little more effort and a little more time, but it's totally worth it. We have used ours ever since our girls were little. They are adults now and they still love it. And so it's something that you can have in the family or give as a gift and it will be loved and cherished and used for years. So let's not wait any longer. Let's jump in and get started. My original snowman was made from a piece of a four by eight beam. And since I didn't have that available and it would be really expensive to buy right now, I picked up a one by eight piece of lumber from Home Depot. We cut three pieces that were nine inches long from this board. If you don't have a way to cut these yourself, you can ask Home Depot to cut the pieces and they will do that for you. We also took the third piece of wood and cut it down to two inch strips. Here are the pieces and this is the front and the back. And since a one by eight is not actually eight inches wide, it's like seven and a quarter. They are seven and a quarter by nine inches. And then these are the two side pieces. These are two inches wide by nine inches tall. For the brim piece of the snowman's hat, I picked up this piece of wood from Dollar Tree. It is five and a half inches wide by 11 inches tall, and it is about three eighths of an inch thick. I just found this in the crafter square aisle. If you can't find it at Dollar Tree, you can pick up something similar at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. I will also be using these wood planks from Crafter Square. They come six in a package. I will be using three of them for my snowman. These are the 7.1 by 2.8 inch size. I picked up these wooden stars at Hobby Lobby. They are one inch and there are 10 per package for $2.99 and I did get them for 40% off. And I picked up these little linoleum nails. They are 11 sixteenths in, in, in size, but I liked the finish of these and I got those at Home Depot. I will be using this chiffon cream chalk paint to paint my snowman. I will also be using this ink or black colored chalk paint for his hat, as well as some craft paint just in a kind of mauve color or uh, pink and then uh, orange and black and then also some metallic gold. I'm going to start by sanding down all of my wood pieces and making sure that they are nice and smooth and have no sharp edges or splinters. Next, I'm going to paint only one side of one of the bigger pieces using the chiffon cream chalk paint. And I'll show you here in a little bit why we're only doing one side of one of these for now. Once the paint on the front of my snowman is dry, I am going to figure out where the nails need to go I want to make sure they are spaced evenly, so I will be measuring and marking them out. So I have figured out that the top row of nails needs to be five and a quarter inches up from the bottom. So I'm going to mark that on both sides. Then from that five and a quarter mark, I am going to measure in one and one eighth increments down and mark the other four rows where my uh, nails will go and I'll mark those on both sides. Then using those marks as a guide across the snowman, I'm going to place my ruler across so that it lines up with both of those marks on the edges and then I am going to put a mark at 7 8 inch from the left side, one at two and a quarter inches from the left side, another at three and five eighths inches, and then five inches, and then six and three eighths inches. Those are all measurements from the left side. So I know that sounds like a lot of strange numbers, but that's how it works out so that it looks nice and neat and even. And then I'm going to repeat marking those same measurements on the four rows below that. 
And to make this easier for you, I am going to uh, make a diagram with all of the measurements on it, and I will put the link to that in the description box so that you will have that quick reference guide. Next, I'm going to paint on my snowman's face. This is going to be easier to do before I actually put the nails in the front here. So I am sketching a little simple snowman face. This face will be on that uh, reference sheet that I have in the description box below. And uh, so if you need to use that, but I'm just kind of freehanding a cute little face and then I am going to paint it. I'm going to start with my pink color and I'm going to use a little round stippling brush and if you don't have a brush like this you can use a little piece of paper towel you can use a different kind of brush you can use a sponge uh, and just maybe practice on a piece of paper or something until you get the look that you want but I am just going to use this and the trick to making these little cheeks on this snowman is to uh, use very little paint and uh, make sure that your brush or whatever you're using is dry and you can always add more paint so uh, start light and work up next I'm going to use my black acrylic paint and I'm going to use a smaller brush and I'm going to paint on his eyes now if you're not comfortable uh, painting these eyes then you could certainly use a sharpie marker just to draw and fill them in and you could also use the sharpie marker on the little uh, dots that are going to make his little coal mouth and actually if you have an orange sharpie you could use that to do the nose so uh, this can be very easy uh, I just like the looks of paint I like to paint and so I just decided to paint my snowman's face now I'm going to take the end of a paintbrush you could also use a stylus and I am going to just dip it in the paint and make dots for his mouth and this is going to be like the pieces of coal I usually start with a little bit of paint and then add more if I want those dots to be bigger now I'm going to use the orange acrylic paint and I'm going to paint his little carrot nose so now I'm just using a really tiny little brush and adding some little white uh, dots in the corners of his eyes. These just really help him come to life and give him a little personality. I did also decide to use my little brush and add a few little lines with the black paint on the carrot nose as well as uh, a little bit of black at the bottom of the carrot to give it some shadows and then I took some white paint and added that to the top side of the nose to make it look like there was just a little bit of snow on his nose I really love adding these little details I think it just uh, makes it so cute and takes it to the next level So now it's time to add the nails and the nice thing is there are enough nails in this package that you can make several of these snowmen countdowns if you want and there's enough wood in that that piece of lumber to make a second one as well so I'm just going to hammer in these nails about halfway in and I'm making sure that the thickness is right so that the stars will hang from the nails um, so they'll slip over the head and still uh, have enough room to hang and so then I'm just going to uh, tap in all of my nails and the reason I'm doing this before we assemble the snowman is because I didn't want to glue all of his body together and then be pounding on it because I thought that that might be counterproductive and cause it to kind of break apart the glue well, of gluing his body together so that's why we're doing all of this first and in a minute we're going to start assembling our little snowman
So now that I have the front of my snowman all done, all the nails are in, now it's time to glue his body together. I'm going to take the other larger piece of wood that is unfinished and I am going to take my two side pieces and I'm just going to run some wood glue up on the edge of each side of the back of the snowman and then I'm going to place those sides on top. I'm going to use some clamps to hold these together. If you don't have any clamps, you can uh, just set something heavy on top. Just make sure that your wood pieces uh, stay aligned. And then um, I'm going to let this dry for a couple of hours. I will put the link to these clamps in my description box under my favorite crafting tools because they are definitely some of my favorite crafting tools. They're super easy to use because you can put them on using just one hand and I love that about them. So it's been a couple of hours and the glue is pretty much set up. It will uh, continue to dry but it's good enough so that I can keep working on my project now. So now I'm going to add some more wood glue to those side pieces and then I'm going to place the front of my snowman right down on top of that. Make sure everything is lined up and then I'm going to uh, put my clamps on this and let it dry thoroughly. And you do want to be careful when you put your clamps on not to crank it down too hard. You don't want to uh, make indentations or marks on your project but this is just to kind of secure it together uh, so that the glue can set up. While that's drying, I am going to take the wood piece that I got from Dollar Tree, the one that's like five and a half by 11, and I am going to cut off two inches off of the length so that it is now five and a half by nine. Then I'm going to take my three wood planks, two I'm going to leave just as they are, and then the third one I am going to cut two pieces that are three and a quarter inches long from this one piece. These are going to be the side pieces for my snowman's hat. Then I'm going to give all of these pieces a quick sanding to make sure that they are nice and smooth. And I'll use a damp paper towel just to get off any of that sawdust. To put together the snowman's hat, I am going to start by putting the two side pieces on top of the one long piece. So I'm going to use some wood glue. And for this, because this wood is really light, I am going to also add a little bit of hot glue so that it holds it in place right away and I can keep working with this. And now I'll add a little bit of wood glue to the top of those sides and a little bit of hot glue as well. And then I'll just put that other wood plank right on top of that. So I'm basically just forming a box that's going to be the top of the snowman's hat. On the five and a half by nine inch piece of wood that we're going to use for the brim of the hat, I'm going to measure one inch in from every side and then just draw a line all the way around and this is going to give me a guide for the placement of the top of the hat. And then I will just put some wood glue all around the bottom of that box and glue that down to that brim piece. Then I'm going to put some heavy books on this and let it dry completely and I am making sure that I get any excess glue wiped off so that I don't have any drips uh, that are dried on my finished project. Once the body of my snowman is completely dry, then I am going to take some wood filler and anywhere there are any little gaps or anything where I glued the pieces of wood together, I'm going to put a little bit of wood filler in there and um, then I will let that dry and sand it down so I have a nice smooth surface to paint.
So now it's time to paint the rest of the snowman. So I'm going to use that same chalk paint that I used for the front of the snowman and just paint the sides and the back. I'm not going to worry about the inside because that is not going to show. And so just a nice coat on the sides and the back to finish off the body. For the hat, I am using Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. It's just a black chalk paint. You could use a black acrylic paint as well. And I painted the inside of his hat, and then I'm going to paint all of the outside except for the bottom. On the bottom, I just painted a strip around the edges, uh, the part that was going to show so that when I glue the hat on, I'm gluing a raw wood to raw wood using the wood glue. I thought that would give it a stronger hold. So that's why I'm painting it this way because that center part of the hat on the bottom is not gonna show anyway. When that black paint is dry, I am taking a chip brush or just kind of a really bristly brush and dry brushing some of the white paint on the hat just to give it some dimension and make it look a little bit old and worn and uh, I just think this added a lot to the hat instead of just having it a plain black. Then I'm going to use my wood glue and a little bit of hot glue and glue the hat to the top of the snowman. And I was pretty generous with the wood glue. I just made sure that I cleaned up any uh, drips or any that was kind of squeezing out. But I wanted this to uh, make sure that it was uh, stuck on and uh, wasn't going to come off. And I did set some heavy books on this and set it aside to dry. Okay, now it's time to make our stars for the countdown. So I have 25 wooden stars that are one inch and I need to drill some holes in them so they can hang on the nails. And this is a little tricky because you have to do it very carefully so that you don't break the stars. So I first put down my little cutting mat and a little piece of scrap wood, and then I used a smaller drill bit than I actually needed. I used a 1 8 inch drill bit to drill my first hole in the star, and then I used the actual size that I needed, which was a 9 64 inch bit to make my hole a little bit bigger. And this worked really well because when I tried to use the bigger bit first, uh, it would crack the star or break it. So by using the smaller bit and then the larger bit, I was able to get my holes drilled without breaking the stars. And I'm drilling my holes up toward the top point of the star because I need to have room to uh, put my numbers on the stars. And then I just checked to make sure that they were going to fit okay. So now I need to paint them and I am going to be using this metallic gold acrylic paint. You can pick this up at Walmart or any craft store. You could paint these using a paintbrush, but we need to paint the front and the back and the sides. And so let me show you a little hack that makes painting small things like this so much easier. I am just going to take a zippered sandwich bag and put half of my stars in there and then I am going to drip about three to four drops of paint in there. Um, you can use a little more or less but uh, I think less is a little bit better because if you get too much then it gets really globby. So I just zip that up and then I just squish them all around to make sure the stars get all covered and then dump them out on my paper towel. Then I will use a paintbrush to just smooth out any places where there might be excess or um, any missed places. And I did use a heat tool to kind of dry this top side so that I could flip them over and they wouldn't stick to the paper towel and that worked really well. Then I'm going to take the rest of my stars and just repeat this process.
Once the paint on the stars was dry, I did pick them up and look at the sides of the stars because there were a few places on the stars that uh, the paint didn't get on. So I just made sure everything was covered, just touched them up a little bit, and this only took a few minutes. Now that all the paint is completely dry, I am going to write my numbers on the stars using a black Sharpie marker. And I could have painted the numbers on, but even I didn't want to uh, go to that length. So the black Sharpie marker works great for this. And while I didn't do this on mine, I think I'm going to go back and do it. But uh, I would put the number on both sides of the star so that when you're looking for the star um, in the bag to put it on and you're looking for a specific number, you can find it more easily. And now that everything is completely dry, I am going to spray my stars and my snowman with this matte clear sealer because I want to protect the face of the snowman and I want to make sure that those numbers stay on the stars. So it's just going to protect my whole project. Well, our snowman is looking pretty cute, but he definitely needs some embellishment. So I am going to use this Buffalo Check wired ribbon as a scarf. You could use any type of Christmas fabric or ribbon um, that you want to use for a scarf for him. I just tied a knot on the side and trimmed it off and then I did add a little bit of glue here and there just to hold it in place. I just used my hot glue gun just to secure it. Now I'm going to take a floral pick and I am going to embellish his hat. So uh, I'm going to just cut this one apart and uh, use some pieces from it. I'm not going to use the whole thing. Um, I'm going to arrange them on his hat and then just hot glue them down. And for the very last step, I am going to take my white acrylic paint and I am going to add a little bit here and there just around the brim of his hat and on the very top of his hat just to look like he has a little bit of snow. So when I went to put my stars on my little nails, I noticed that they didn't want to go on very well and that was because some of the paint had gotten in the hole when I painted the stars. So I just took my drill bit and ran it through the hole really quickly and then they fit back on the nails just fine. So here he is all finished, this cute snowman Christmas countdown. And I love how the stars just store in the top of his hat. I just put a little organza bag in there and we keep the stars in there. And he's just so much fun. What a, a cute way to count down to Christmas. Another favorite Christmas project was this red truck Christmas countdown, but you could put any saying on this that you want. For this DIY, I will be using this cute wooden truck from Dollar Tree. All my supplies will be from Dollar Tree unless I tell you otherwise. And so I will also be using these two little wooden crates and this three pack of little trees. Also, I'll be using this four pack of little clip on chalkboards, a little bit of faux snow, some thin jute twine. I'll also be using this linen white chalk paint. This I picked up at Walmart and I'll be using some other colors of craft paint as well, such as this red chalk paint and some black and gray craft paint. These I just picked up at various places, either craft stores or Walmart. I'm going to start by gluing my two crates together 
using some super glue wood glue. This I did get at Dollar Tree and it works really well. So I am just gluing the two ends together. And I am adding just a little bit of hot glue just for an instant bond so I can keep working while that wood glue is drying. Then I'm going to give my crates a couple of coats of chalk paint and I did go ahead and paint on the inside of the crates as well because you will be able to see through the slats in this so I just wanted it to all be really finished looking. While that is drying, I'm going to go ahead and paint my cute little truck. I am using just a red colored chalk paint to paint the body of the truck. And uh, this, I just kind of went along with the uh, guidelines of the detail. I'm going to be painting my fenders a different color, but you could paint those red as well. I'm going to use a black Sharpie just to kind of outline where the tires would be on this, uh, just to give me a guideline. You could color the tires in using the Sharpie, although I find that it bleeds a little bit on the wood. So I did decide to go ahead and paint mine uh, just with the black craft paint. But like I said, you could totally just color them in with the Sharpie if you wanted to. And as you can see here, I did go ahead and paint the insides of the tires because those will show and I painted the inside of the truck red as well. Here I'm just mixing some black paint with some gray just because I only had a light gray and I wanted it to be a little bit darker. So um, I was just mixing it to get the color that I wanted, but I'm going to paint the fenders of my truck gray. Once that gray paint is dry, I'm going to take a dry brush with just a little bit of black paint on it and I am going to dry brush kind of in a circular motion, kind of following the shape of those fenders over that just to give them a little bit of a worn look. And then I'm going to go ahead and dry brush a little bit of the black paint on my crates as well. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of that thin jute twine and I am going to use it to attach my little chalkboard clips to. I'm going to be using all four of those little clips and I'm going to just clip them onto that jute twine and I'm going to glue the twine at each corner and then up at the center. I decided not to attach the little clips permanently because I wanted to be able to just take them off of the little twine and write on them. I thought that might be easier, um, but you could add a little hot glue if you want them to stay on permanently. I just hot glued the twine and clipped the clips on. And as you can see here, I'm writing days till Christmas on the last three clips and then I'm going to use that first clip to write how many days until Christmas. The great thing about this is it's just a chalk marker so you can change this up and make it say whatever you want. You could do this Christmas countdown or you could put something like joy to the world or have a Merry Christmas. Next, I am going to add a little faux snow to the top of my crates and I'm just using this um, weld bond glue only because all of the regular Elmer's glue I had was all dried up and I didn't really have any good craft glue so I am just using this weld bond which is total overkill for this but it works. And I'm just placing a few patches of snow. I am not covering the whole thing but you totally could if you wanted to. And I went ahead and placed one of the smaller trees and the taller tree on the back left corner of this because I wanted to get them on there so I could place some snow around them. And then I just continued to add a few patches of the faux snow. Now I'm going to place my little truck where I want it and mark underneath the tires so that I know where to put the glue. And then I'm just going to put uh, just a little drop of hot glue under each tire. At first I had just stuck that other little tree in the back of the truck and I thought it was going to stay okay, but then I decided I should add a little bit of hot glue just to secure it. So I did do that. 
I love how this little Christmas countdown turned out and I think this farmhouse red truck is just adorable. Another project that many of you loved was this hand-painted lighted globe, and this is just perfect for Christmas or for winter. For this next project, I will be using this large plastic ornament. Now this is one of the flat ones. It's not a round ball. And I did pick this one up at Michael's, but I have seen similar ones at Dollar Tree. I'm also going to be using this little wall decor piece. as well as one of these wooden candlesticks. These I did pick up at Hobby Lobby and these are one and seven eighths by one and three quarters. I will also be using a string of LED battery powered lights from Dollar Tree. Um, either one of these styles will work, but I think the thinner strand wire will work better. I will be painting my ornament using this Rust-Oleum frosted glass spray paint. This I got at Walmart or maybe Michaels, I'm not sure. And I will be using some various craft paints, green, white, and then some metallic gold and silver. These I just had on hand and picked up at various places. I'm going to start by removing the top of the ornament and then spray painting it with the frosted glass paint. I took a piece of floral foam and stuck a dowel in it. This way I can put my ornament over the top and spray it easily on both sides. And I find that I have to do multiple light coats of this to get the frosted look that I like. So I would just let it dry between coats and while it was drying, I would work on other things like this. So I turned my little wall decor piece over and put my battery pack inside of there. And then I'm marking um, where uh, that is. I'm going to cut it so that it's just a, like a quarter of an inch larger than that battery pack. And I'm just using my miter box and saw for this. And then I am going to take the end off of the longer piece and I'm going to attach it to the smaller piece. So I'm basically just making a small little box for my battery pack to fit in. And it's real easy to break this apart. And then I just used a razor knife to cut off that end that I'm wanting to use. And then I cleaned it up a little bit. I used some wire cutters to kind of snip off some of the chunks of glue that were still attached to it. And then I am going to sand it and trim it a little bit just to get it to fit uh, nicely on the end. And I did have to kind of bevel the edges of the little box that I cut. Uh, using the razor knife uh, so it would fit as nicely as possible. And it's not perfect, but I think it still works. And I just used a little bit of hot glue to attach that end. Next, I painted my box black, and I'm actually gonna show you what I did first because you're gonna see it throughout the remainder of this project, but I do end up changing it at the end. So uh, I took my little box that I painted black, and then I took some white paint and an old brush and just kind of pounced a little paint on here. I'm just kind of trying to make a little bit of a, I don't know, speckled look um, to this just to give it a little more interest. And I also did the same thing and added a little bit of silver paint to that too. And then I took my little wooden candlestick and I painted it with the black paint. Now that my ornament has the frosted look that I like, and honestly, I put probably six or seven coats of paint on this, um, but it's uh, got a frost, nice frosty look, and we're going to do some painting, and I am going to just encourage you to try this. It's not hard, even if you 
think you don't have painting skills and you can practice this on just a piece of paper or uh, just something that you know you don't really care about and then go ahead and do it on your ornament so for this we are going to be using a flat paintbrush and you want it to not be a round brush but a flat one uh, because we are going to paint some trees if i were bob ross i would say we're going to paint some happy little trees and this is very similar to the way bob ross does it but it's just a really easy technique so give it a try so I am using some white and some silver paint and I'm just kind of mixing them a little bit together on my brush. And then I am going to keep my brush, uh, the flat part, I'm just going to keep it horizontal and I'm going to start at the top of the tree and I'm going to work down and you'll be able to see how I am uh, making the tree branches, but it's just going back and forth. I'm just kind of dabbing little lines. And then I am going to continue to make my tree wider as I go down. And then at the top of the tree, I do turn my brush vertical so that I can just make the little skinny top of the tree. But for the rest of it, I'm going to keep my brush horizontal and just dab back and forth. And the secret here is to not have too much paint on your paintbrush. You can always add a little more, but if you get too much, it's really hard to get that uh, look that you want. It just kind of all blobs together. So less is more. I'm also going to take the white and the silver and just along the very bottom of the ornament, which is actually the top of the ornament, because you can see here that I have the ornament upside down because I want that hole facing down. Um, and so along right above where that opening in the ornament is, I just painted uh, some snow along the bottom. And I'm going to do this white and silver tree on both sides of the ornament. And I made them about the same size on each side. And I did add a little bit of extra uh, silver once I had my tree uh, just to kind of help bring that out and add a little bit of more sparkle to it. Next, we're going to take some metallic gold paint and just a liner paint brush. And we're going to make some just stick trees, basically. So like trees in the winter that have lost their leaves. And I started out with this uh, liner brush that was a little larger and I didn't like how it was looking. So I actually switched to a smaller liner brush. And uh, if your paint is not, uh, drawing lines very well if you add just a little bit of water to it just a little bit uh, to thin it out then it will uh, draw lines better so um, i just switched to that smaller brush and then i'm just making a couple of lines of vertical lines and then adding some branches off of the the main tree trunk and that's all so I know some of you are still thinking, I can't do this, but please give it a try. You might be surprised. And if you decide you can't do it, then you can use uh, something that you cut out on a Cricut machine or some sort of decal or rub on transfers on this. So it's not limited to just painting. So now I'm going to use the same technique that I used on those white trees. Uh, for a green tree in the center. It's kind of like the, uh, the showcase of this project is this nice pretty green tree. So I mixed some lighter and darker green paint and I'm, I'm not mixing it thoroughly because I want the different colors to show. Um, but I'm just putting a little bit of each on my brush and then I'm using that same technique to do this green tree. And I'm making this tree a little larger and so it is covering up a little bit of those gold trees and a little bit of the white trees on the bottom. And then I'm just going to add uh, some various colors wherever I think it needs it as far as the darker or lighter green. And then once that is dry, then I'm going to add a little bit of white just to make it look like it has snow on the branches. Mm -hmm. 
and I just love how elegant this looks and how easy it really is to do. Now we're going to assemble our little base for this and so I'm marking where the center of my box is so that I know where to drill a hole. And I'm just using a drill bit that is big enough so that I can thread my lights through that. And then I'm also going to drill a hole through the candlestick so that I'll be able to put the lights through that as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and thread my wire lights through that hole in the bottom of my base and then also up through that little candlestick. And as you can see, my little battery pack fits in there and it has a little extra room for the extra wire. And then my lights are going to go up through the candlestick and I'm going to glue that candlestick to my base. And then I'm going to thread my lights into my ornament. And once I have the whole strand of lights threaded into my ornament, I'm going to glue it to the top of that little candlestick. Isn't this so pretty? The camera doesn't even do it justice. It just is very elegant looking. But I do need to cover up that part of the ornament where the the top of the ornament was because it has threads on it. So I'm going to just use some ribbon and I had this fuzzy white ribbon that I got on clearance after Christmas last year at Michael's, but you could use any type of ribbon that you want to cover this up. So I'm just going to glue a little strip around that uh, area of the ornament and kind of cover up that seam where it attaches to the candlestick. And then I'm going to tie just a regular little bow and glue that on as well. Well, I decided I wasn't loving the black base and so I decided to paint the candlestick white and then I decided to paint the base white. I wanted it to just have a softer, snowier look and so I just put a couple of coats of white paint. You know, sometimes you end up changing things up from your original plan and that's okay. Let me know in the comments which way you liked it or if you would have done it a completely different way. Once my white paint was dry, I did decide to add some sparkle glaze to the base of this. This is uh, something you can pick up at craft stores for sure, and maybe even Walmart. I don't remember where I got this. It's just a clear glaze that has glitter in it, and it's great for doing projects like uh, that are snowy or that you just want to add a little bit of sparkle to. The next project is this beautiful candle holder centerpiece and this could be used for any season all year long. For this project I will be using this silver tray that I picked up at Dollar Tree along with these metal storage containers. These are uh, from the Crafter Square aisle. They come two to a package and I will be using three of these containers. I will be using these three votive candle holders that I found at Dollar Tree. I think these are stunning, but you can use any uh, candle holders that you have that are about this size. I will also be using a 3 8 inch dowel. I just picked this one up at Walmart. This is a piece that I had left over and it needs to be at least 14 inches long. Some other supplies I will be using are some metallic silver craft paint some E6000 glue, as well as some hot glue. 
I'm going to start by cutting down my dowel to the size pieces that I need. And you do want to make sure that your dowel is straight. I noticed this one's got a little bit of a bend to it. So I'm going to cut it so that I'm hopefully getting the straightest pieces possible. But I'm going to cut one piece that is six inches long and two pieces that are four inches long. The guides on this miter box will help you get a nice straight cut and that's really important in this project. Now that I have my dowels cut down to size, I am going to take a little bit of sandpaper and just clean up those edges a little bit, but you do want to make sure that you don't sand off it too much to make it uh, not a straight edge anymore because it is easy to sand it and get kind of an angle. Next I'm going to take my metallic silver paint and I am going to give these dowels a couple coats of this. I think it took about three coats to cover these so it had a nice a good uh, solid silver finish. Next I'm going to find the center point of my tray and I'm just going to mark with my pencil a couple of marks along the center just for reference. Then along that center line, I am going to be marking the center of the tray. On mine, it was about six inches to the center. So I'm going to be putting a, a mark there. And then I'm going to measure in from each edge of the tray two and a half inches and put a mark there as well. So now I'm going to take my little storage containers and I am going to remove the lids. I'm just going to be using the lids of three of these containers. The lids are just a little bit shallower and are going to work better for this project. So I need to find the exact center of my lids and so this is the trick that I use to do that. So I turn my lid upside down on a piece of paper and trace around it and then I'm just going to cut out that circle and then I will fold it in half and in half again so that I have like a quarter of the circle. Then I'm just going to line up that rounded edge along the edge of my lid and I'm going to mark where the center point is and I'm going to do that on all three of the lids. Now that I have those marked, I'm going to use some E6000 and just a little bit of hot glue to glue these dowels to the lids. Now, I did find that the super glue from Dollar Tree worked really well for this too, and so that's a good option. And I actually think it might give a stronger bond than doing it with the E6000 and hot glue. So uh, if I were to do this again, I think I would just use the super glue. You do have to hold it for a little bit longer to get it to set up. Since I used the E6000, I did leave mine overnight to set up, but you could do a much shorter time with the super glue. Once those are all set, then it's time to attach them to our tray. And again, I used the E6000 and the hot glue because I hadn't really thought of using the super glue before I did this. That was kind of an afterthought. So like I said, if I did this again, I think I would just use the super glue. But I went ahead and put a little bit of E6000 on this and then to get it to stand up, uh, while the E6000 was drying, I did put just a little drop of hot glue on it as well. And as you can see here, I put the taller one in the center with the two shorter ones on each side. So once again, I let mine set up overnight and then it's just time to style it. And this is so versatile, you can style this um, so many different ways, which is one reason I love it so much. So I put on some greenery that I had and then I have these three little votive candles, like I said, that I found at Dollar Tree. And I just put the little LED tea lights inside those. And I just think that is so pretty. I love the way this looks. And this is great just for winter. It doesn't have anything really Christmassy on it, but you could also add like some Christmas ornaments in with that greenery and that would be really pretty too.
this DIY was inspired by these Pottery Barn berry trees. And since I got a whole box of berries for just five bucks, I can certainly make them for less than $159. But even if you had to pay full price for your berries, you could still DIY these for a whole lot less. So I am going to be using three of these tinsel trees from Dollar Tree. I'm also going to be using this galvanized bucket. Now I picked this up in the summer and it was part of their beach themed items. It actually has a starfish on it, but I think I can get away with it because it's going to be Christmas themed and people are going to be thinking Christmas, not beach. So people will just think it's a star. I'll also be using some red fabric that I got in the Crafter Square aisle at Dollar Tree. And of course, I'm going to be using some red berries. I used about seven stems of these berries and these are pretty large, so you'll need quite a few berries. And it will just depend on the size of your tree and the size of the stems of berries that you get. I'm going to start by removing the tinsel from these trees and they are just hooked around a little hook on the bottom so you just uh, find the end and unhook that and then you can just unwind the tinsel off of the little cone. So you can use just one of these cone frames or you can stack them to make taller trees. I'm actually going to stack three of them together to make my tree. Next I'm going to take my red fabric and I am going to use it to cover these cones. This is going to hold the cones together and it's also going to give me a surface to glue the berries to. I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue in random places and just roll this around the cone frames just uh, securing it as I go. And I just trimmed off the excess fabric, leaving a little bit at the bottom, and then I folded that over and secured it with a little hot glue. Next I'm going to take my little galvanized bucket, and I picked this one because the cone fits perfectly around the top rim of this. So I'm just going to use my hot glue, and I'm going to put a generous amount around the rim of the bucket and just glue the cone right to that. So now I'm going to just snip off some pieces off of the berry stems. I'm going to be using all of the stems, but I am using some of the smaller parts later to fill in where I need them. So I cut lengths of berries that were about two to three inches in length, and then uh, I'm going to hot glue those around, starting from the bottom working up. I did find this a little bit time consuming, but a good Christmas movie on the TV while you're doing this will make the time go by really quick. Once I have my cone pretty well covered, I'm going to go back and look for any bare spots or places where I can see that fabric showing through, and I'm just going to tuck some little pieces of berries in there and uh, just fill it all in. This next DIY was one of my favorites and it was so easy to make. For this next project, I will be using an 11 by 14 inch canvas, but you can use any size canvas for this project. I'm also going to be using some sticks that I just gathered from my yard. Some pieces of this pine greenery. And I think the more real that it looks, the better for this project. I will also be using some little pine cones. I think I got these at Michael's, but Dollar Tree usually carries them during the holiday season. And I will be using some red berries as well.
to start off, I am going to remove the staples from the back of the canvas. I'm using this staple remover. It's one of my favorite little tools for things like this. It is linked in my favorite crafting tools down in the description box, but I use it all the time. I'm just going to loosen those staples and then I'm going to pull them out using some needle nose pliers. Once I have all the staples removed, I am going to remove the canvas off of the wooden frame and I'm just going to set it aside because I won't be using it for this project. Next I'm going to use some Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color linen white and I am going to do a dry brush coat over this natural wood frame. I want the natural wood to show through but I am going to do kind of a heavy dry brushing on this. I love these chip brushes from Dollar Tree for this. They work great for dry brushing so just on my dry brush I'm going to get some paint and then uh, just brush over the wood so that the wood still shows through in some places. Once that coat of paint is dry, I am going to use some truffle colored chalk paint by Waverly. This is a dark brown and I'm going to dry brush a lighter coat over the top of the white and this is going to give it some more dimension and make it look a little bit more rustic. So now it's time to lay out my sticks and I tried to pick ones that were fairly straight but still had some character to them. So I'm just going to start laying them out across my frame until I like the way they look. I'm wanting them to touch at the top and the bottom of the inside of the frame so that I can glue them at least at those points. Some of them I will be overlapping on the top or the sides of the frame and a couple of the sticks were shorter and didn't reach the top of the frame but I was able to overlap them over another stick that did uh, span all the way and then I could uh, glue it to that other stick so that it had something to uh, stabilize it. And some of them I needed to shorten. I just marked them with a marker and then I used my little miter box and saw and trimmed them down to the right size. Then once I'm happy with the layout, I am going to use my hot glue gun and I am going to neatly glue them at the top and the bottom and like I said, anywhere they overlap each other, uh, just put a little hot glue to keep it all together. Now I'm going to cut some small pieces off of my pine greenery and I am going to just lay them out uh, just randomly on my sticks to see how I like them. Once I have them laid out to where I like the way it looks, I'm going to uh, glue them on with some hot glue. And now I'm basically going to do the same thing with my red berries. I'll just cut off some small pieces and place them. And once I'm happy with them, I will glue them down and I will do the same thing with the little pine cones. Now I could leave this as is, but I am going to add some white chalk paint to the greenery and branches and the pine cones and the berries, uh, just kind of randomly here and there, just to make it look like snow.
And my last project in this top 20 DIYs of 2022 video is this ornament organization storage solution. You're going to love this. So currently my ornaments are in three large totes and I am going to combine them into just this one single tote using these 24 compartment drawer organizers that I picked up at Walmart. These come in a two pack for just $4.87. So the package said that each of these are 12 by 12 inches, so I did verify that and I'm going to cut a piece of foam core board 12 inches by 24 inches and I actually did make it just a tad bit longer, about 24 and a quarter inches just to give me a little extra wiggle room. And I will be cutting two pieces of foam core board this size, uh, the 12 by 24 and a quarter, uh, so that I can make two trays using these uh, 24 compartment drawer organizers. So before I start gluing these down to the foam board, I'm just making sure that they are going to fit like I had planned and uh, this is perfect. And so I'm using some Gorilla Glue sticks in my hot glue gun and I'm going to be pretty generous with the glue and just glue this down all the way around, making sure that I hold the uh, drawer organizer uh, straight because the sides want to bend in because they're foldable so uh, I just hold them straight until the glue sets up. Then I'm going to add the second drawer organizer in the exact same way and I will add also a little hot glue in between the two um, along the sides on the top edge just to make sure that they are stuck together well and that everything is secure. So now I have a tray that I can store 48 ornaments in and I decided to add some little jute twine handles to my trays. I did just hot glue these on because the trays aren't that heavy. Uh, you could uh, actually punch through the cardboard in the organizers and tie your twine to the sides if you're worried about the, the twine handles coming off by just gluing them, but I felt like they were pretty secure. So I'm going to take out my ornaments out of the boxes and start putting them in the dividers. And I did have some that had some little notes that came with them that I did want to keep. So I just put those in the little uh, compartment with the ornament. And just with this very few amount of ornaments, look how much packaging I was able to get rid of. I think this is amazing. And I've just gotten started. Okay, I know what you're thinking. You're wondering, what about those larger size ornaments? Well, I do have a solution for those as well. The material that these drawer organizers is made out of is very easy to cut with a pair of scissors. And so you can cut out sections from uh, the inside of the organizer and make larger compartments. This was so easy and it worked great. And this does not have to be done before you glue them to your foam board. So if you glue them down and later on you decide you want to make more larger compartments, you can certainly do that. So I made two trays using these drawer organizers and now I'm going to make a third tray using this set of drawer organizers. This I also got at Walmart. It was $6.87 I believe. There are six trays. And these are a little bit shorter and they're individual, um, but this actually worked perfect for my tote because 
I was not able to do three trays of the other drawer organizers because it was too tall. So doing two trays of those and this tray of the shorter organizers is perfect and it fits in my tote exactly. These trays had little cardboard flaps that you were supposed to push down into the bottom, but they didn't really want to stay very well, so I just uh, added a little bit of hot glue and secured them down so that they would stay put. The dimensions of these, once I laid them out on the foam core board, was still 12 inches, but I did have to add a couple of inches uh, to the length. Uh, to be able to fit all of them on but that still fit inside my tote and so my foam board was 12 by 26 inches uh, for this one and then I just used my hot glue and glued these to the foam board just like I did the others By using these larger drawer organizers, this gives plenty of room for some of those odd sized ornaments or miscellaneous things that you might have. And so I think this is a great addition to my organizing tote. And I will be adding the jute twine handles to this tray as well. So here are two of my totes completely empty. The third tote has boxes from ornaments that are actually my daughter's and I didn't want to get rid of her things. So um, those uh, will wait and let her decide on. But I took all of these ornaments out of the packaging and put them in my organizing trays and look at all of these boxes and packages that I can get rid of. I did find some things that I could donate so I can get rid of those because I don't use them anymore. And I did have a few larger items that need to be stored in a different place. But look at all of my ornaments in these trays. I got so many ornaments in here and I still have room for more. I'm so excited about this. I should have done this years ago. Now I can see all of my ornaments. I can lift the trays out and I, it's just so much easier to access them. It will be faster to decorate the tree and faster to put the ornaments away after Christmas. And so I am super thrilled with this. So the total cost for everything, including the tote, was $26. I did get my tote last year after Christmas at Costco. These are the best totes. It was $5.99 on sale. I can guarantee they are going to cost more this year because unfortunately, everything costs more this year. But this is still a very budget-friendly option for storing all of your Christmas ornaments. I do want to mention that when you are making this, depending on the tote that you are using, it is best if your trays go all the way up to the top so that your lid goes on and covers that top tray uh, right across the top. And this is going to keep things from moving around. So even if the tote is tipped, things are going to stay in place. If your trays don't go quite all the way to the top and there is a little bit of room in there, this would be a perfect place to store your tree skirt or even maybe a Christmas throw that you're going to store and just put out at the same time you'll be putting out your Christmas items. So um, just something to keep in mind because you want your uh, ornaments to be all secure and not uh, rattle around if the tote should get tipped. And you can see that I did have some room on the side of my trays. And I think that that is actually beneficial because I did have some larger things that I could store in there as well. And it just keeps everything nice and tight in the box. And uh, I can store so much in this. I hope you enjoyed this video of my top 20 DIYs of 2022. Let me know in the comments which ones are your favorites. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. 
If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell and set your notifications so that YouTube will notify you every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day.